All right, so we've been learning about classes and we've been learning about methods, which are really just functions that are inside of classes. And you have to call methods a little bit differently than you would a normally function, than you normally would a function. Um, in this next section, we're gonna be learning about special methods. And uh, special methods are a little strange because we don't call them at all. Uh, they kind of um, automatically get called by Python at, at certain key points. And we've already seen one of these, the init constructor. Um, and that gets called uh, whenever a new object is created. I'm not explicitly calling it, but nonetheless, it runs. And uh, and it turns out there's many other um, examples, right, with this kind of surprising behavior. And in general, they're all going to be kind of beginning and ending with two underscores in the name. And and so even though there's many here, and you could go read this documentation and learn some of them, I don't even know all of them. Um, I'm going to introduce some of the key ones in this in this course. Um, you might have noticed when you're in Jupyter Notebook, um, the output you get depends a little bit on whether you're using a print or just putting a value in a cell, right? It's kind of the same object, but it might be displayed a little bit differently. Um, I'm going to be just demystifying that. That really has to do with uh, special methods that can control how um, objects end up looking in both cases, and we're going to be writing those ourselves. Um, second, uh, I'm going to be talking about the equal equal operator right are two objects the same and, and so if you look at this little snippet of code down here where i say c equals a equal equal b uh, what is the type of c and you probably are thinking boolean and that's true like 99 percent of the time but it actually depends on what type i have here for a and b um, so i wonder can you think of a type i might have here where i want to get a boolean and, um, and the answer is, well, if either A or and or B is a series, a pandas series, then I wouldn't get that. Because if I had a pandas series, well, let's say I had these two pandas series, what I would do is I would try to say, well, um, are the first two values equal or not? I did true or false. Are the second two equal or not, true or false? And I'd ultimately, when I'm using this equivalence operator, get a series of Booleans instead of just one Boolean. And so the people who are writing pandas had to basically hijack that equal equal operator and we're going to learn how to do that for our other um, new types that we're creating um back in uh in, in 220 we learned a lot of, about a lot of different sequences we learned um that with you know whether i have a string sequence or a list sequence um i can do various things i can index i can slice i can loop over things um i can get the length of it um, in this class, we already learned new one new sequence. We learned the bytes sequence, very similar to a string sequence. And um, and if we implement these special methods, get item and length, we can convert our new classes into new types of sequences, right? That have all of these properties. Um, finally, we're going to be, and you know, in another day, we're going to be learning about context managers, and. When you've been uh, kind of opening files before, the way I've taught you to do it is that you open a file, um, you maybe read or write to it, and then you close it. And, uh, and and if you've Googled online at all, I guess you've probably seen this other pattern here on the right, where I have this with statement. I say with open file.txt is f, uh, data.read. And whenever you look at these examples, guess what? Um, the programmer is not manually closing the file. The with statement takes care of that. And so with statements are really about kind of doing things that require some sort of cleanup at the end. And if we have context managers by implementing these special methods, uh, we're gonna be able to get that behavior in other cases as well. Okay, so I'm gonna start here um, with these other ones. I'm gonna unfortunately be doing more examples about dogs and cats. Um, and then uh, after that, in the next video, I may move on and actually start to do some more real things um, that are not animal related. And so let me head over here. I'm gonna head over to uh, my uh, Jupyter Notebook. And, and you can see that here I have my dog class as usual. And I have my two dogs, Fido and Sam. And well, let me just try printing off Fido. If I print a dog, I get something like that. Um, if I'm down here and I say Fido, you can see that it's very slightly different, right? In the first case, it, it's saying, you know, object in the middle and down here it's different. So, so why am I getting two different things? And the reason is that whenever I want to use an object like a string, because I want to print it off or directly look at it, um, it it's calling a special method for that class. And then the two special methods here, 
that we are going to care about are stir and uh, the representation function. And I haven't implemented these myself, so there are these default versions, and then these are the two defaults I'm getting. Uh, but I can, I can if I want to, define how both of these behave. And so this one here is going to be calling stir to get it. Whenever I'm doing print, I'm, I'm basically converting it to a stir. And, um, and down here, I'm going to be using the representation. And, and the difference here is that this is really uh, for the eyes of a non-programmer, right? Generally, when I'm printing something, I'm imagining that maybe I have some program. And, and, and even though I'm a programmer and I wrote it, I'm sharing that program with somebody who's not a programmer and they just know how to run it. This is generally for the eyes, uh, for the eyes of a programmer to look at, right? So that's why they might be um, different. So, so let me let me kind of go through here and implement both of these. So I'm gonna implement my stir and uh, method, and, um, and and really I'm gonna uh, just have the receiver in this case, and I I can return whatever I want, right? I can return something like I am a dog and I run this, and and you can see, just like I said, whenever I'm printing something, it's trying to convert that object to a string using this thing, and uh, and then it's printing that, right? So this message gets printed down here. Um, whatever I return here, right, is what, what happens when I try to convert to a string. So even though I'm not ever calling this explicitly down here, uh, it's a special method and it gets called automatically. Um, if I run this down here, nothing changes because this is still looking for the programmer um, representation. Now, if I wanted to, right, there's nothing stopping me from uh, from here also doing the same thing, right? I could return the same message uh, and, and that would be fine as well. Now, um, kind of there's a, some tradition here. I, I guess in general, we want to not just print something that's the same for all the, all the different dogs, but I would really like to say some information about my object. So, so maybe what I might do is maybe I might say a dog named something uh, of age something. And, and maybe remember what these brackets are for inside of a string. Um, if I want to, I can say dot format and I can put some information there. And, um, and, and well, let me try this. I'm gonna try putting in, you know, I wanna know what the name and age is, right? So what is the name? Name can go to here. And, uh, and what is the age? Age can go to here. And, and, and if you're, you're kind of familiar with other programming languages, I'm guessing most of you are not, um, this would work fine. But in Python, we always have to explicitly use our receiver, right? So this would not work. I actually have to say, you know, here, this is the object I'm interested in. I'm going to look up this information for it. And, and so I'm going to run this. And, um, and now, now this is very nice, right? I mean, I can print off both my dogs and I, I get some nice information information about them. Right, again, the uh, representation is not, not changed. Just as an aside, kind of as a, a, as a trick, there's a shortcut for all of this that, uh, that I haven't taught in the previous course that you might appreciate. Um, this whole thing, calling dot format, there's a shortcut, and that is, I can say I want to have this be a format string, and then inside of these brackets, I can say what piece of information I want to get um, embedded there, right? And then, then I don't actually have to call this format thing. I'm just trying to do this. This is going to be exactly the same thing. And, um, and, and this is just a little bit easier on the eyes, of course. Um, okay. Uh, I want to fix up my uh, wrapper too, which is what happens when I just put a value at the end of a cell in Jupiter. Um, and for that, there's a tradition. And the tradition is that I return a string that's really a piece of Python code that I could use to create another object like this. And, and so, so in this case, well, what would I do? Um, I, I really wanna return a string that looks like this. So I may do this, I may return something like format string and, um, and well, uh, let's think a little bit about this. I need to have, well, let's give this a try. I may have a format string and well, I want to create a dog object. And, and I guess I have two pieces of, uh, kind of two arguments here that I need to put in, right? So I need to put in both uh, self.name and then self.age, all right? 
And well, it, it's not quite right because I don't have quotes around here. So maybe what I should do is I should actually, you know, if I do a wrapper here, since this is a programmer friendly version, I'm gonna get some quotes around this. I'm gonna do this. And now I actually get something very nice. I get something that I could copy and paste to create a new dog object, right? I could do something like this. I could say Fido2 equals that little snippet of code. And, and, and now I have two dogs. I have Fido and I have Fido2. And, and just to be very clear here, right? We're gonna talk more about equality, but if I do something like this, they happen to be two different dogs. Two different dogs that really have all the same attributes, but uh, different objects nonetheless. Okay, so that's good. Right, I have my string, which is for non-programmers, wrapper, which is for programmers. And, and there's one more that I want to teach you, which is very similar to wrapper. And it is called wrapper underscore HTML. And it's just like this. And well, let me just um, come down here. And, and, and it turns out that this one is not actually built into Python. Uh, these are special methods built into Python, which is why we need the two underscores. Um, this one is actually uh, part of Jupyter, Jupyter Notebooks. And, and that's why the naming convention is a little bit different. I just have these different um, uh, underscores here. Uh, but what's special about this one is that, is that I cannot just return a regular string. I mean, I could, right? Um, but I can return some HTML in here. And, um, and so what might that look like? I, I might do h1, and then maybe if you remember what h1 is, this is like a very bold title, right? So I could say, I am a dog. Uh, maybe I'll make a, a dog in italics like so. And I'm gonna run down here. And now you can see when I'm just putting this value in a cell, I get something like HTML. And that's very nice, right? So if I have both wrapper and wrapper HTML, so I really prefer the wrapper HTML um, when I'm in Jupyter um, notebooks. And, and, and there's this is useful for different things, right? I mean, it's kind of silly here, but when you've been using Pandas and you create a data frame, you don't just see a bunch of text, you actually see a nice table. And the reason for that is because whoever built data frames in Pandas was using wrapper HTML. And what were they returning? Well, they were returning, you know, a table tag and a bunch of stuff inside of that, right? So they're returning this HTML table, um, which I won't do right now. Okay, so those are the three that I really wanted you to learn that were related to uh, kind of how I see an object. Um, let, let's go back to this other thing I said, right? Well, you know, are Fido2 and Fido the same dog? Um, that's kind of for me as the programmer to say, right? Maybe maybe these are just kind of different objects describing the same animal. And and so really I'd like to define, well, are two dogs the same uh the same or not? Um and, and, and so how can I do this? Well, there's a special method, and that special method is equal. And and what it does is I'm gonna come back to here what it actually gets passed in, but return whether uh, whether two objects are the same. And, and I'm putting same in quotes because I'm the programmer and I get to define that. So I have to put two objects here. And, and one of those is, of course, always we start with a, pre, a receiver for one of these, and then I have to have some other object. Okay, and so I can return whatever I want, right? So I'm gonna return a Boolean here. And the beauty of this is that when I'm running code like this down here in this last cell, whenever I have an equal equal, um, that equal equal is ultimately going to be calling um, this method. And, um, and actually this is kind of an interesting point. I mean, when they're new programmers, they feel like they're learning two things. They feel like they're learning about um, operators and they're learning about function. But kind of as you become a more advanced programmer, you actually see those things are really the same, right? Every operator, is just like a function that um, you know maybe takes two arguments, right? This is a function that takes two arguments. I'm calling it down here, even though the syntax is different, right? So I can think of this as a function. And, and so let me just put a, a something here. So check if equal, so I can see that that's actually happening. And, and well, how, since I get to define if two dogs are the same, um, I'm gonna say that they're the same if they, um, well, I'm just gonna say they're the same if, if their names are the same 
and their ages are the same father.age then I'll say it's the same dog right so I'm going to do that and um and now now you can see when I run this well Fido and Fido2 even though they're different objects um are, are are the same dog because I said so and you can see that even though I'm not calling this explicitly right it, it, it gets called and normally you wouldn't have prints there because it's it's confusing right but just to kind of uh, illustrate what's happening okay so I can define when two two different objects are equal equal to each other but one of the things I cannot do is I cannot ever like claim that two objects are the same object right I cannot say if I run this well guess what these are two different objects the objects have all the same information and I can recognize that but still two different objects okay so that's good so I can uh, see whether two dogs are equal or not and um and, and right if I try to compare Fido to Sam well then that's false um as I would expect um let, let's say now that I have um let's say I have a list of dogs right so let's say I have um you know my dogs and I have a list of both Fido and Sam okay so that's fine maybe let me just print off my dogs here quick um well, one of the things you're noticing here is that when I'm printing this how is it figuring out what goes inside of here um it, it's figuring that out by calling the wrapper function right so this is a very um kind of important key right when um even though you might implement a wrapper html always implement a wrapper too right because maybe people have a list of your objects um okay that was an aside um let, let's say i wanted to sort these dogs right um and let me just try getting a sorted list of my dogs i'm gonna get a type error and the type error says that less than operator is not supported between instances of dog and and dog is that true because it are really dogs uncomparable well, let me try this so i'm gonna say is fido less than sam and, and i actually get the same thing right they're not comparable and, and, and well what's going on here um, when i'm calling this sorted function that's built into python it's trying to figure out well what dog is the lesser dog and what dog is the greater dog and it can't do it right because there's no way to say that one dog is less than another dog unless unless i come up here and define it right so there's this other method i can do which is the less than the less than special method this is less than and um and it's very similar right? i have to compare two things and uh and i could do what i want now i mean i could maybe say that uh, the lesser dog is the one that comes first in the alphabet with respect to name um i'm just going to say that uh you're the lesser dog if the age is less than um than the other dog right so older dogs are greater um younger dogs are lesser and, and i'm going to run this now let me let me kind of delete all this other stuff in the middle we don't need that i have my dogs and, and now i can sort my dogs and i can and i can actually well i guess i didn't look at that too closely before and i can compare my dogs right so um so that's great um and so if ever you wanted to do sorting right you have to implement the less than needed for sorting okay now let, let me show you something that's a little bit frustrating about how this works so I, i've done equal equal i've done less than um guess what let's say i do something like less than or equal to that doesn't work even though i've defined these other two so so really what i'd have to do is you know i'd have to do you know less than or equal to and and then guess what i may have to do well uh, greater than right if i wanted to have have this work i have to do greater than um i guess it's actually working for me this time i might have to do greater than or equal and right and that and that well why did that not work let me try greater than or equal to and and that's not working and so so in general right it can be cumbersome to have to implement a bunch of different uh methods like this so if you only care about sorting you only have to do less than um if you are, are kind of having to do these other things i guess well there's there's not a great way around it or right? you just uh um do what's kind of necessary for your use case okay let me see what else i wanted to cover here um so i think that's good so i think those were uh just kind of looking at back at what we had 
been talking about. Um, I've just covered how to represent objects as strings or HTML, how to compare them. In the next video, we're going to look at how we can build our own sequence. And then, and then the next time in the lecture after that, we're going to look at context managers.